I read somewhere between 40 to 50 books every year, but I never read digital books and I rarely do audiobooks. Why? Because over time, I have built a very specific note-taking system that allows me to get more insight and take more action on the books that I read. And in this video, I'm gonna share the reason behind that decision to only read physical books, why that means I don't just pipe things into Obsidian using Readwise, and what I do instead. Now first, let's deal with the medium. Why physical books? Digital books provide a bunch of advantages. Why not just use those? You can carry your entire library with you wherever you go. Your progress is synced across devices, so you can read literally anywhere, anytime. And with Readwise, you can even automatically pipe all those book highlights directly into Obsidian. Sounds like a bookworm's digital dreamland, right? Well, not exactly. Even though it's easier, I've found that I read more and I get more out of what I read when I read physical books. That's how I got started reading in the first place. I started carrying a physical book with me everywhere I went. I had a physical object that I could pick up instead of my smartphone or e-reader every time I had a few spare moments. And I started reading a page or two here, page or two there, instead of scrolling. There were no options about what to read. I just picked up the book I had with me and I started reading wherever I had last left off. Now at the beginning, I really wasn't worried about taking copious notes on these books. And then I fell into the trap of trying to capture too much. But my approach to reading and note-taking fundamentally changed when Joe Bulig and I covered Mortimer Adler's classic book, How to Read a Book, back in episode 42 of the Bookworm Podcast. Now, Mortimer Adler was the editor for the Encyclopedia Britannica and a seriously smart dude. He equates reading a book to playing catch. And the goal as the reader is to receive and understand the message the author is sending then decide for yourself what you're gonna do with it. Now, skilled authors have more control over their message, so it's easier for the reader to receive, but ultimately we still need to be skilled receivers if we wanna catch the whole message. Now, once we receive the message, we need to decide what do we do about it. And that's why it's important to ask questions as we read a process that Adler calls active reading. So as we read, we need to be asking questions like, what is this book about? What is being said and how? Is this book true in whole or in part? And ultimately, what does it mean to me? What am I going to do about reading this book? Now, in order to do this, Adler shares four levels of reading that we can use to make sense of the message that the author is sending. The first level is elementary reading, which is basically understanding what does this specific sentence say? The second level is inspectional reading, and this is where we start to ask, what is this book about? The third level is analytical reading where we start to ask more questions like the ones that I shared earlier as we attempt to decipher that entire message. And the fourth level is syntopical reading where we compare what we just read alongside other books on the topic. Now, Adler also used a very specific pre-reading ritual that he calls systemic skimming, where you look at the title page, then the table of contents, check the index, read the publisher's blurb, and dip in and out of pivotal chapters. I think this is a bit much, but I have found it helpful to know a little bit about the book before I dive into it. So I've modified this a little bit and worked it into my own book reading workflow. Now, when it comes to taking notes on these books, I use MindNode on my iPhone. And I think that the mind map is the perfect modern format for working through this process that Mortimer Adler described when he wrote his book back in the 1940s. And MindNode is the best mind mapping app that I have ever used. Now you might be wondering about why I use my iPhone to take notes when I just talked about how physical books are great because they minimize distractions. Well, I've done quite a bit of work to force myself down intentionality paths whenever I pick up my phone. I've actually written about this for the suite setup if you wanna dive into the philosophy behind how I structured my home screen, there'll be a link below this video. But basically, I try to only have apps on my home screen that I consider to be positive uses of my technology which means that my note is prominently placed in my dock so it's easy to access when I'm reading a physical book and I wanna take a note. And with the choices that I made on my home screen, I've found that once I get some momentum by picking up that physical book and starting to read it, the phone really isn't much of a distraction. So here's how I put my notes together. Before I start reading, I grab an image of the book cover from a quick Google search and I place that right in the middle of the mind map. Next, I look at the table of contents in the book and I recreate that in my mind map structure. 
If the book has parts, I'll create those as the main nodes and the chapters as child nodes underneath. And as I read, I capture notes and occasionally I'll use my node to take photos of important diagrams or visuals from the books that I read and I can drop those right into my mind map. Now an important note here, I'm very careful to fight the urge to rewrite the entire book with my notes. I've made that mistake before and now I only capture the things that really stand out to me. I like the word resonate here because it implies a reverberation. It's something you can actually feel. Now, having read somewhere around 500 self-help and productivity books at this point, I've learned to pay attention to that feeling, and I only capture the things that I feel are important, the things that resonate within me, not what the author wants me to believe is important. So I'm basically applying Mortimer Adler's rules here as a filter while I'm reading and taking notes. I also have this emoji coding system that I've been using for years to help me locate the really good stuff once I'm done. So first I use a light bulb emoji to denote something that was enlightening or inspiring. It's basically the equivalent of an aha moment or something that is kind of surprising. Next, I use a key emoji for the key arguments that the author is making in the book, which makes it easy to go back and grok the basic message later when I review my mind map if I want to revisit my notes on a book. I also use a quote bubble emoji for quotes that I want to save. I'm a big fan of quotes, I've collected thousands of them over the years, and these are basically the one-liners that stand out to me when I'm reading and I make sure that I capture the page number and also the author if it's not the author of the book itself. I use a talking head emoji to denote things that I want to talk about when discussing the book on the Bookworm Podcast, which makes it really easy to create the outlines for those episodes. And finally, I use a mind-blown emoji once in a very great while and only for things that just completely blow me away. Now, I could probably do all of this using tags, but those didn't exist in MindNode when I started using this system. And honestly, I just really like the visual nature of this, so I've continued to use this system over the years. Now, once it's time to move my notes into Obsidian, I export the mind map a couple of different ways. First, I export a PDF mind map, which will get dropped into the book notes page itself. And then next, I export a markdown version of my notes, which allows me to copy and paste the outline version as markdown formatted text inside the book note file in Obsidian. So then I go into Obsidian and I create a new note in my book notes folder. And based on my templator settings, the book notes template gets applied automatically. Now, if you wanna know all the details around how that works, I walk through how I set this up in my previous video on using templates in Obsidian. And if you want to download my book notes template, plus a bunch of other templates and Obsidian tips, check out my free Obsidian University Starter Vault at obsidianuniversity.com vault. There's a link to that free Starter Vault below this video. Now, once the template gets applied, I open the Markdown export of my book notes in my default text editor. In this case, it's Nova. And then I copy my notes and paste them into the notes section of the Obsidian book notes file. I'll also drag in the PDF into the mind map section so I have both a visual version of my notes and a text-based version. Next, I'll fill out the appropriate metadata up at the top of the note, including the tags, author, and if we covered this book for the Bookworm podcast, I'll link to the note for that podcast episode. Next, I'll go through my notes and I'll start to clean things up. If there's anything I feel should be its own note, I'll add double brackets around it to create an atomic note out of those longer book notes. Check out my previous video on atomic notes if you want to know more about why that idea is so powerful. But basically what this does for my book notes is it allows me to tie together concepts and stories that appear in multiple places. So at this point, I've probably read two dozen books that reference things like the Pareto Principle, the Pomodoro Method, and the 80-20 Rule. And if I have an atomic note for each of those concepts, I can connect those to the books that mention them instead of having those notes buried deep down in the longer notes from those individual books. Now, after I'm done cleaning things up, I go back up to the top and I force myself to write a three sentence summary of what the book was about. Now, sometimes this is pretty tough, but I like this forcing function to try and distill hundreds of pages of information down into a three sentence summary. So by now, hopefully you're starting to see why I don't use Readwise. My note structure is very different than the standard bulleted list that Readwise gives you from your digital highlights. 
but I still think it's a phenomenal service. And if you prefer to read digital books, then I would absolutely recommend it. But I'm obviously partial to my crazy system that I've detailed here because I've seen how helpful this is in collecting and developing new ideas. I believe this is the thing that's really helped me to make sense of the books that I read, and it's a major factor of how I'm able to create so consistently. Now, if you like the mind map format of these book notes that I showed you here today, you should sign up for my newsletter where I occasionally share these mind map files, as well as tips on how to use Obsidian to improve your own productivity and creativity workflows. You can sign up for that newsletter, which goes out every Monday at obsidianuniversity.com email. I'm also working on building a published site with all of this stuff in it, but it's still very much a work in progress. So the best place for now to get the updates and the book notes is at the newsletter at obsidianuniversity.com email.